Hey everyone, Sean here and welcome to this video. I wanted to sit down and talk about uh, my initial thoughts and impressions for Natalyn, uh, the newest re uh, region added into Genshin Impact. And I played it. F I played through the main story, of course, the Archon Quest, uh, featuring, of course, uh, Mavuika, the Pyro Archon, and my overall thoughts for everything else as well, as well as the story and just Natalyn as a whole. At, uh, as of uh, 5.0. So uh, 5.0 for Genshin and so thus far, I just think at this point, um, I feel like I'm, like I'm just kind of going through the motions. Uh, it does look pretty to its own uh, right, but I think it didn't really wow me. Um, I, I was kind of like um, slightly overwhelmed in a positive way. But it didn't definitely leave me like wowed, um, like it kind of did with like Sumeru, for example, or even uh, Inazuma to a degree. Um, so that's just my sort of like initial like reaction when I just when I was like actually interacting and, and when I first stepped in, into uh, uh, Natalyn and you know first saw the land, right, the region of Natalyn and sort of like interacting interacting with it as well um i think that also uh was reinforced by what i've come to realize what these saurians are right which is like supposed to be like these creatures right these essentially they're like dinosaurs or mini dragons that allow you to traverse through the land um you know in their own way right so you have like the sharks or these like uh you have like the 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 shark looking things right which you can swim through uh um the water right uh there's no like i don't think there's any underwater uh stuff at least not yet anyway for natlin uh i think they want to save that for for fontaine right uh all that for fontaine that's why we don't really quite see that in uh natlin right but um instead we have you know this the, the sequence where you like kind of glide through the air as a sea the, 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 what do you call the the water saurian right which is, i thought kind of kind of a strange choice considering that you know we have the uh the saurian that actually kind of soars through the air sort of which is um you know the one that kind of like does like the spider-man thing you know uh, uh, latching onto the um the points right and you have the green ones which actually make into a platform when you land on it and then you have like the red ones which don't but um i think they're they have like different characteristics right when you interact with them and then you have of course the ground saurians which you can drill through but you can also um, traverse upward as well as you climb up a mountain but um, I've come to sort of realize that the Saurians, I feel like anyway, this is just my own subjection, of course, in perspective. But these Saurians are kind of more or less kind of just like vehicles, if you will. You can, you can, you can also kind of like, if you think about it, it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto because you can kind of like steal other people's Saurians to a degree. Well, at least with the enemy Saurians anyway. You can steal their Saurians and then become them, and then when you exit out of the the Saurian mode, it essentially be, they just become like a symbol or something. So they're essentially they're kind of like semi dead, of if you will. So it's kind of like a weird sort of thought I've been having throughout my experience in that land as well. Um, the Saurians just kind of felt like vehicles to me, which. It's a little bit of a disappointment. I was hoping that these creatures would offer like just vast freedom of uh, mobility in their own degree, right? So um, I, I didn't even think that they would have like a meter for it either. I mean, um, it would be one thing that, you know, maybe, yeah, like these, maybe it would be pretty OP, right? To just have these unlimited or whatever, but um, it just kind of feels pretty limited. Uh, sometimes also, um, the, some of the Saurians feel inconsistent, especially with the green one. Um, I feel like sometimes when you can feel like you can climb up this edge or ledge after you um, do the Spider-Man swing or whatever, the, the Spider-Man latch or whatever you call it, um, the hook shot, if you will. After you do your hook shot, 
you, you would think that you can climb up this little edge right here, but sometimes they just don't. And then sometimes, um, like I, I get that they're not supposed to be able to run up the wall, but it really feels like they can they can't run up these walls if it were just to be um, a lore thing, right? If you if you were to just see these creatures in like an and the Genshin anime, they would be able to absolutely run up those walls easily, but they just purposefully limit these creatures to give the ground saurians I, you know forgive me for forgetting the names for each of the things but um the ground ones are the ones who can climb up the wall so if, if it were the case of the green ones doing the same thing as well then it kind of is a little uh, very much a little point to it right but even then i feel like the the inconsistencies do do kind of like pop up with at least one of the saurians anyway and then yeah and then um the like i said the water one is kind of like whatever um most of the time for me i'm actually using someone like um uh, molani because I, I i just happened to get her uh through the gotcha um which i did made a mistake of pulling on that banner because i just wanted kachina i wanted maybe like an extra kachina or something like a, like a c1 kachina or something but uh, I, I forgot I was on guaranteed pity and it actually set off um, after two ten pulls, right? So, so 20 pulls, unfortunately for me, because I actually wanted to save up for um, Kanich, who is, you know, really cool. He He's the one who with the Spider-Man swinging, which I feel would be like pretty handy in terms of exploration. Whereas someone like Mavwik, no, excuse me, uh, Ma Mulani, yeah, she's nice to have for cruising just forward on the ground like that, but... Um, and of course on the water, but I kind of want also the mobility, the air mobility as well. So um, overall, I think uh, someone like Kanish kind of fits the glove best for me. And of course, his design is really cool. I like the headband stuff. I love, I, I really like um, characters with uh, headbands, especially anime characters and also video game characters. Um, I, I think I, I, it just gives them that look that I just really like in character designs. But um, less of that, uh, I just happened to pull for Mulani, so I've been using her a lot more. But it also uh, not only you know sucks up the their own gauge, but they sucks up the orange gauge below, which is the same gauge you use for um, the Saurians as well. If you uh, go on for a little too long, and that also kind of like gives it more of that vehicle feel, right? It's like fuel, it's gasoline or whatever you want to call it, unleaded fuel, whatever. That also really emphasizes the whole vehicle thing that I have with these uh, Saurians, right? It, it kind of, they, they all kind of give off that vehicular motif, if you will. It's just there for trans transport, uh, which I don't think is a bad thing, but I just thought differently uh, with the Saurians. I was, I was hoping for something else different. And I guess they had to put some limits somewhere, and then I guess that's really how you do that. Um, I wish there were more ways to earn back um, the fuel. You know, I was I, was, I thought that there was, it was kind of like um, like stamina, but you have to collect um, like the orange fire things or whatever the orange flame things so to uh, fill up fill up the orange gauge back up. Uh, which can be a little tedious at times. You can you can be stuck not being able to do so, but uh, I guess there are certain areas where there are plenty of them, but there could be a situation where you're kind of like uh, dry on that fuel for a good hot minute. Uh, so the Saurians and the whole mobility thing thus far is just okay. Um, it's it's kind of like... Um, half a step forward from all the other mobility options and features that Genshin offered in the past, including Sumeru's, of course, with uh, Inazuma, so on and so forth. Uh, I, I don't even remember if Liwei offered anything like that when it came to climbing up, because a lot of like stuff in Liwei was very vertical, right? Whereas Inazuma, yes, you can kind of fly and stuff like that uh, with the sigils or whatever you call those those are the signias in the air and then of course with Samara of course that was very clear I can definitely vividly remember the hookshot stuff which is pretty cool 
And uh, Inazuma was kind of like a half step down from that, right? Being the region before. Anywho, though, um, Natland is supposed to be um, a step forward, but overall, it kind of felt like a half step forward, if you will. Maybe even a half step back uh, in some ways, maybe for some people. But I heard like mixed things from the people, you know, kind of um, uh, stepping into the chat whenever I streamed. And that my my sort of initial experience with Natlin. And one of them said it was just kind of like very whelming or whatever. It was just um, disappointing, probably at worst. And uh, I can kind of uh, start to see that the more I, I let um, I let it sit. So, like I said, though, um, I feel like I am going through the motion. It's like, okay, it's an update. It's going to do this. And that's it. I'm not really, like, wowed by it uh, too much. I was hoping to be. But um, there were just kind of, like, those thoughts running in my head. Like, yeah, you know, the mobility could have been better. It could have been more fun um, to go through. The challenges are okay. Um, they do deploy the Saurians, right, as part of those challenges. Which is okay. I mean, the the water saurian one. It kind of just feels like, um, what do you call those? Like those. Um, it's not. It's not even like Panzer Dragoon or anything. You're just you're just like stuck on this rail essentially, and you're kind of just going through. You can jump, and it's just kind of whatever to me. Um, it's just for you to collect stuff, you know. So I'm just kind of doing it just for the sake of it. Same with. Um, the other two, right? You're just kind of like going through these obstacle courses with the Saurians' abilities and such like that. And maybe there is an audience for that. And I think maybe they're, they're having fun with it. That's fine with me. But for me, I feel a little whelmed by it more than anything. Um, I was hoping something a little different. And hopefully maybe um, this is just 5.0. They have plenty of time to improve upon it. Uh, hopefully. So... Like they have been doing so much as of late for now a day a day, so it's pretty strange to see them like tr really trying to do the radiance thing right with the gotcha and all that stuff. And speaking of the gotcha, I also had this thought about um, what Hoyo could possibly do with these characters at this point, how to like sell them to to uh, to the players. In my thought is that you know uh whenever again first off whenever a genshin or excuse me a gacha game reaches to a certain point right um they've already covered like most of like the character tropes uh at that point like within like uh maybe like a good four years or something right so i think we're pretty much around that time um we're already starting to sort of like see repeats of um, character tropes or personality traits like uh, Xiao and Kanish. Though to be fair, Kanish is a little more socially active. He shows he looks out for people like Mulani and Kachina and stuff. So that's pretty cool. So he's kind of like that that middle uh, responsible sibling within the three the trio anyway. And then of course Kachina is the youngest one. And then uh, Mulani is kind of like. To me, like the old, the oldest sister, that's like very overly confident and happy and all that stuff. Happy go lucky, but very confident at, at what she does, right? And also kind of a little loud and proud um, at that. She does kind of boast those moments to me. But to um, wrap up the point, to get to the point, is that. Because they're starting to, uh, I'm starting to see repeating patterns and such like that. Other than maybe some exceptions uh, at this point, like uh, the Tsundere um, girl, which is Sitlani, right? She's coming up at some point. But, you know, you already have like that cool chick, like, um, um, uh, I forget her, I'm forgetting her name already, but it's like, uh, I think it's Chaska. She's the one, she has like the musketeer hat. We're already seeing like s similar sort of uh, characters like um, Chlorine, right? Uh, obviously, they have their differences, but you can kind of like already see start start to see repeats and in, in in a way. So, um, so they'll have to come up with something a little more different, right? And I think a way to 
um, sell these characters this time around for Natlin, I think they're trying to kind of play it really safe to make sure they sell these characters is that most of these uh, five star Natlin characters are going to have some sort of, uh, and, and I guess some of some uh, you can say the same for like the Natlin four star characters, but definitely on the five star characters in Natlin will have some sort of mobility mechanic. So Mulani has the shark, right? You can skate, uh, the sur you can surf around with the shark. Um, Kanish uh, or Kanish uh, can um, do the Spider Man swinging. You know, he's essentially the humanized version of the green Saurian. Same with uh, Mulani, she's the humanized version of the blue Saurian. And then, of course, um, uh, Kachina is essentially, well, the ground Saurian in human form with the ears and everything, right? Um, that's essentially, you know, those those characters are essentially going to be that. They're, they're going to have some sort of mobility mechanic. And that's even more, I feel like that's even more reinforced um, if anyone has seen the leaks of future characters, they're already showing off their sort of uh, mobility mechanics as well. So that's the one spoiler I'll give is that, yeah, like those, the, the future characters are going to have some sort of mobility mechanic as well. So because um, it seems like they're starting to repeat some character tropes and such and traits, they got to add on these mobility mechanics to, well, make sure that... Um, you have some sort of incentive to pull these pull for these characters so i think that's really what they're going to do that's the, that's the sort of game plan anyway for uh natlin with the exception i would say someone like um capitano if he is going to be actually playable but he is slated to be playable i mean people can kind of smell it from a mile away i'm pretty sure he's going to be playable but i so but because he's not necessarily from natlin quote unquote um i think he's going to um be uh the one exception right uh or some of the exceptions that he will not have that sort of quote-unquote mobility mechanic maybe I, I keep you wrong on it maybe he will i don't know but for right now it does not look like it for sure now uh will someone like mavuika have a mobility mechanic of her own i mean you know maybe she's wearing that outfit for a fucking reason right with the the whole biker chick motif thing that's very it's an interesting choice. I have my words on that, which I haven't like got into the um the, the story, but um the more I thought about Mavrika's like character design, initially I was in uh I, was, I did like it with the sunglasses and everything, but from the bottom down, I felt like it was very whatever because all it is is just a, a biker suit, uh, a tight leather bike biker suit, which is um a little bit on the lame side, especially. The zipper, right? I don't know. It's, it's uh, pretty wild. They're going, to, they're kind of going wild with that zipper stuff, right? <laughs> especially with the the backside. But anyway, it is a little disappointing, uh, especially this character is supposed to, is supposed to be, you know, like representing West Africa, South American, right? But all she's just wearing is just a tight suit. So it's like. Huh. The only thing cool about her is the sunglasses, right? I would have, I would have um, forgiven for that much, but yeah, the, the hair does define her quite a bit. It does make her distinguish from the rest of the the Archons. Um, I mean, I guess yeah, no one else is wearing a biker suit in the Archon lineup, but you know, for someone who's supposed to be representing that kind of culture, biker suit, I don't know, right? That now. Admittedly, that did come after the fact, and not so much like during the initial reaction of it. When I first saw her, I was like, "Oh, it's the." Uh, but um, I wasn't even sure that she was the Pyro Archon until, well, obviously at some point, right? Um, that uh, has kind of like stuck with me for a little bit when I first or uh, uh, saw Mavuika in the story. I was kind of like, you know, the more I thought about it, the more it became a little disappointing. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously her eyes, her hair, and then the her face side of things is okay. It's just that the whole biker thing, the, the 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 outfit is a little a little lame um, now to me. So um, I don't know how you guys feel about um, Abuiko's outfit. Like, the, you know, is it is it something you guys like? You guys um, love it or hate it or something? 
Um, you're more than welcome to leave those comments in the comment section below, by the way. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Now, um, speaking of my Wigo, right? I mean, of, of course, there is the story. I just think the story is just okay. Um, I think overall, it is setting up um, a lot of things from Natlin of, um, and what it has and stuff like that. And it's a little confusing. It's a little overwhelming to me anyway. Um, there's just, there's just, there's just something about like, you know, my Waco having these objects with memories in them and then apparently they, they give off power or something. So that stuff comes, comes into play later. So that's a bit of a, a vague spoiler, but not so much. So I, I'm trying to be like kind of careful about it as much as possible. Now, what I will tell you is that if anyone was looking forward to Capitano in the story, you will be vastly disappointed um, in terms of screen time because pretty much what you see in the trailer is what you get for Capitano, with the exception of stuff later on in the story. But you're not going to see too much of Capitano. He just kind of just appears, fights, and then disappears. That's really literally what happens. So that that I, I will spoil that much. But otherwise, there's a lot of st stuff being set up. You um, you kind of like get your establishment with the Natalie characters, a lot of them anyway, like Chaska and um, Mulani, Kachina. Uh, I guess a little bit with um, Kanich, but not too much. But you can also get a, a, a sample of um, Aha, I guess his name is. I, th I thought it was supposed to be Aja, but... I think it's aha, right? Because that's how it's said in Japanese. So I think like, oh, is, I think is this supposed to be like a S S South American thing or something like that, or it's supposed to be like some sort of a Spanish name? I'm not too sure. It's, um, it leaves me curious, I guess, and a little confused. But anyway, so I'm going with uh, aha for right now until someone can correct me on that one. Anyway, so uh, you get a, a little bit of aha, you know, you get uh, somewhat of a uh, a gist of Kanij, but you definitely get more with uh, Mulani and Kachina. So there's a, the story does heavily revolve around um, Kachina and Mulani. So you know, at some point, you know, something happens to Kachina. So yeah, you know. So uh, those two are pretty central, maybe in. Uh, um, and that's for, of course, Act 1 and 2, right? So I suspect that somewhere in Act 3 and 4, that's where you get to know Kinich more, Aha more, and maybe more of the uh, the rest of, like, the tribal chosen people, or whatever you call them, including Zilonen, right? Or Zilonen, whatever. Hey, these, these names are kind of hard, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. So uh, it's a little hard to keep up this... Um, for this time around but i think that's the thing right with natalyn right now um i just think overall it's just um good i give it at best but not like whoa like i was like you know like uh, in awe or anything like that and maybe um just me being jaded is uh does play a part of it but maybe like after playing Genshin for like almost four years now is doing that to me but um you know, I'm not that young gamer anymore. I feel like I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of like gaming for the sake of, you know, um, kind of the hobby, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. Um, I do I do still um, like Genshin for that vast lore. Uh, I just right now think, you know, there's just not much else to say for part uh, Acts 1 and 2 for right now for 5.0. So hopefully by the time Acts 3 and 4 or whatever um, come around, maybe that will like color me impressed, right? Um, the stuff in Fontaine kind of uh, was uh, very interesting. Um, there are definitely great moments in that one too. So we'll see about Natalyn. I, um, you know, hopefully the re the later acts will be really cool, especially with Capitano because I really like him. He's like my favorite um, harbinger, of course. He looks really sick. Um, but only when he has the cape on. I I do not like him without the cape. It's just, uh, it just it just loses that 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 imposing presence to me. I know like the face and all that stuff. His power is supposed to do that. His like claws or whatever is supposed to do that as well. But it's just something about that fur coat 
really adds on to him and, and whenever he he like rips it off it's just like ugh, you know so hopefully he'll have it on when he's like in his like you know assumingly his default gaming model or whatever when he when, uh, whenever his playability is available you know um hopefully later on but who knows about you know uh the rest of the characters that we saw from that Natlin trader like um uh, Aurora, right? Um, what's up with him, right? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So obviously, there's still things to discover. I mean, I, I'm trying to like get all the waypoints and stuff like that. I'm trying to just you know kind of like finding treasure as I go along. I'm not going crazy with the completionist stuff. Um, I'm just kind of like just going along with it. And I find something. Oh, I'll just pick it up or something, right? The Oculus and stuff like that is neat, though, because you get to now add more stamina to your bar. So that's pretty neat. Um, you know, about time they add more stamina. I mean, thank goodness. But yeah. Uh, hopefully they'll update some things. I haven't tried everything. Um, I haven't seen the Radiance thing from the Gotcha just yet. I haven't tried... Um, I don't think I've tried the... What do you call the... Uh, the artifacts uh main stat um uh, or what do you call it? like the change mechanic thing uh, i haven't tried that or anything like that so um you know all the little other new little trinkets i haven't tried but i've mainly tried of course you know the natlin region um i will give it give it this though. i love the wildlife for the creatures they're really cool this time around they um do feel like there is a variety there including the giant rhino giraffe thing um that's really cool i do like it it, it kind of gives off a little bit of like that jurassic park feel so i will give it that for sure i like the wildlife um i think this is the far far the, by far the best wildlife sort of um roster of all the regions i, I think for sure natlin has the best wildlife for sure so i think um but natlin does get that uh sort of point I like the colors. It's nice and bright. Even at night, it seems like it's bright or something. I don't know, just something about the vibes. Um, I do f get those like Crash Bandicoot vibes for some reason. The music and everything is cool. Um, the people are pretty neat, right? The cultures and everything. Um, the dancing and like the sort of athleticism, right? That they give off. You know, it's very more like. I don't know, it's trying to be like aztec -y hip kind of thing almost, um, with the designs and everything. That's forgot what I forgot about too, is like the designs around Natlin, right? If you look at like the uh, promotion for um, Mulani and uh, Kanich and Kachina, the, the logos and everything is like different. So they're really trying to like change, change things up a bit, but I, um, but I only like gave off like just good um vibes or okay vibes for what i said about natlin right so the mechanics is just okay it kind of just there for me and you know it's um a bit of a shallow lake if you will that's colorful looking on the outside but um maybe maybe i'll change once i you know play well uh some more and like um uh and of course let of course natlin update more and stuff like that i do like the updates that came with it though i like the um uh how they're doing it with the what do you call it, the long-term encounter points kind of um i think they did something with that i forget what it was um specifically but i do like the fact that now you can like look for the character materials like when you click on them that's pretty helpful um it'll, it'll even tell you like oh yeah those materials are gone but they're that's but this, but that's what they usually are, and they they have like the dotted lines and everything. That's actually pretty pretty sick. Um, things like that I do like as well. I like those little updates or changes, right, and improvements that are like quality of life. Um, those are pretty welcomed, I feel, and I uh, would like to see more of that. Um, but man, they gotta do with some do like the the skins, right? They gotta do more skins. Um. I think they're. I think this is also another conspiracy of mine with the character designs. I think they're really saving up all of that 
after Tavot. I think they're gonna save all of that once you like quote unquote like rescue your sibling or whatever. Um, I think that's that's when they're gonna go ham on the character costumes because like by that point you're gonna want to start repeating the characters, but you're gonna want to like do something a little new with them. So that's why like with like games like you know Grand, uh, Fate Grand Order, they have all those summer versions and like uh, the holiday versions, right? um this version right this this saber um you know saber altar saber altar made and then like all those versions right i think they're saving all of that for the after the tabot chapter ends or whatever that's my little conspiracy but um there's still other improvements to be had but i'm not gonna say it here because i've been on uh, pretty long at this point so 30 minute video ish Thank you very much. As this has been my impressions for Natlin. I'll keep playing through it, of course. You know, it's it's pretty much what it is. You're just kind of going through the motions, right? Um, and maybe, um, you know, things will just blow up uh, in a good way um, with further updates. But um, I cannot wait for Kanich. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and um, I'll look forward to that and hopefully the rest of Natlin. So thank you very much for your guys' comments on Netland for those who are playing uh, this version of um, Genshin. Any any comments, any feedback, or anything like that um, they would like to give to Hoyo, let me down below here, and I'll take a read at that. Um, but this has been my first impressions on Genshin's 5.0, aka the Netland region. Thank you very much, and hope to see you all in the next video. Sean out.